title of the message is he came to bring the kingdom he came to bring the kingdom now God does a new thing he loves to do a new thing and in the Old Testament before the coming of Christ God chose a people for himself the Israelites he made a covenant with them he made them his precious people and he gave them the law and the Ten Commandments that they were to follow. Well, they disobeyed the law, uh, they disobeyed God, and so he chose to do a new thing, that he would take his kingdom in heaven and usher it into earth, that he would bring his kingdom on earth and he would do it through the coming of Jesus Christ. So it was completely different to the Old Testament. So we call it the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. God was about to do something new, something good. And so the prophet Daniel prophesied that one would come who would be called the Son of Man. He would come on the clouds of glory with the kingdom of God. Something about the kingdom is that the kingdom is present, the kingdom is going to come, and the kingdom will come with the second coming of Jesus Christ. So Daniel said, And behold, one like the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven, he comes to the Ancient of Days, that's the Father. They brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom. A kingdom was given to the Son of Man that all peoples, nations and languages should serve him. His dominion, his authority is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, the one which shall not be destroyed. Jesus Christ came to bring this kingdom. And Jesus said in Matthew 24, 30, he described himself as the Son of Man. Daniel's prophecy. He, he brings into the present into his coming, the prophecy of Daniel, that he was the Son of Man. It was the most common description or title that, you, that Jesus used of himself, the Son of Man. So he says in Matthew 24, verse 30, Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. He's quoting Daniel chapter 7, that he is the Son of Man, that he has come to bring the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven on earth. Then in Matthew 4.16 Jesus preaches a message that had never been preached on earth before. Nowhere in the Old Testament had this message been preached. Matthew 4.16, Then from that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. No one had ever said that before. Moses, the prophets... No one had ever claimed that they could bring the kingdom of heaven on earth. Jesus came to bring the kingdom of heaven, whose dominion, authority and power is everlasting. A kingdom that could never be destroyed. Man has tried to destroy this kingdom. Communism tried to wipe it out. Marxism tried to wipe it out. But this kingdom can never be destroyed. Hallelujah. 
It is from everlasting to everlasting. Mark 1.15, John was put in prison. Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel. Now what does the gospel mean? Someone tell me. Good news. The good news of what? The good news of what? He came preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. The good news of the kingdom that Daniel had prophesied that the Son of Man would bring. Jesus came preaching the good news of the kingdom of God. So Jesus came to bring this kingdom of authority and power and glory on earth and it would bring good news to all who repented and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Then he says, Mark 1, 16, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. You know, all the prophets of the Old Testament had been waiting, Jesus said, for his coming, the coming of the Messiah, the Son of Man, who would bring on earth the power of the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus preaches, the time is fulfilled. Wow. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. What is the gospel? The good news of the kingdom. That's what he brought. The good news, the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. The gospel of the kingdom is the good news that Jesus Christ came to save sinners. Jesus Christ came to heal the sick. Jesus Christ came to deliver the oppressed and tormented. Jesus Christ came to give you a blessed and prospered life. How did he come to bring us the kingdom. He came in the anointing. He came in the anointing. And Jesus taught his disciples a prayer. Remember they said, Lord, teach us how to pray. Because John, the Baptist disciples, they know how to pray. You teach us how to pray. And he said, pray like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Then let's continue. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forevermore. Amen. Jesus Christ came to bring his kingdom and he told his disciples, pray that the kingdom comes, that the Father's will in heaven be exploding, happen on earth. Hallelujah. Luke four seventeen, Jesus stands up. In the synagogue, he takes the scroll of Isaiah. He opens the book and he finds a place where it is written and he quotes the great prophecy of Isaiah of the coming servant. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. What is the gospel? It's the good news of the kingdom. The good news of the kingdom. Poor people are often people who are sick. Poor people are often people who lack mental health. Poor people are often people who suffer spiritual hindrances and curses in their life. He came to bring the good news of the kingdom to the poor. Someone say praise God. 
He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who oppress, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then in Matthew 4.23, he goes out into all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. See, Jesus came to do something. He came to bring his father's kingdom, the kingdom of God on earth. He went around preaching about this kingdom, the gospel of this kingdom. And he brought the evidence of the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven was manifested as he prophetically proclaimed that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Healing all kinds of sickness, all kinds of disease among the people. Then his fame went throughout all of Syria and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, those who were demon-possessed, epileptics, paralytics, and he healed them. Wow. I'd love to be there. Everyone was healed. Hallelujah. The kingdom came. You know, it is this gospel of the kingdom that he has entrusted to us to go to the nations and preach the gospel. And this gospel, Matthew 24, 14, and this gospel, what does gospel mean? Good news of the kingdom. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. Jesus will come again and bring the fullness of the kingdom. And so when the disciples went out, what were they preaching? Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. They raised the dead, they healed the lepers, they cleansed the lepers, they delivered people of evil spirits. The kingdom of heaven came down. It's this gospel of the kingdom that Jesus Christ wants us to preach to the nations. What is our response when the kingdom comes? What is our response in preparation of the kingdom? To repent of sin, holiness, godliness, to humble ourselves and repent. And to believe repentance and faith. Repentance and faith. Repentance and faith. What was the problem with the Pharisees and the scribes? They were hypocrites. That's what Jesus called them. Regularly to their face. He called them hypocrites because they did not repent and they did not believe the gospel of the kingdom. So, what is the people of the kingdom? What do they look like? Jesus said, well, let's look at the example of Jesus. He was the king and is the king of the kingdom, right? The king of kings and lord of lords. And so according to the prophecy of the Old Testament, they brought a colt, a donkey, to Jesus. He sat upon the donkey, which was a statement of his kingship. And he rode upon that donkey and people cast their garments down on the road as he rode. And the children cried out, Hosanna to the highest. The king of the kingdom had come. And when Pilate asked him, he said, my kingdom is not of this world. He came to bring a spiritual kingdom. And so he was, he came as the king, but then he meets with his disciples, takes out his, off his outer garment, puts his towel on, and washes their feet, showing that those in the kingdom are to serve one another in humility. Jesus said, if anyone desires to be first, 
he shall be last of all and servant of all. There's a problem in the church today around the world. It's been happening for years where people, when, when the guest speaker comes in or the senior pastor comes up, they do this big fanfare, honour him, honour her. It's all about you know, honouring the pastor. Be careful because he who is first has to be servant of all. In the church, we're making leadership like kings and queens when we're supposed to serve one another. Hallelujah. He who is first needs to be last and servant of all. Then Jesus took a little child and set him in the midst of them. And when he had taken him in his arms, he said to them, whoever receives one of these little children in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. Remember, Jesus Christ sat with sinners and tax collectors. He sat with people that the religious would never sit with, never talk to. They were too good. They were self-righteous. And Jesus is saying here that the way you treat the little ones, who are the little ones? Those who come in their sin and cry out, forgive me, Lord, who humble themselves. The way we treat them is that the, way, the same way we treat him. If you have this religious pride, that you're better than other people. Be careful. The way you treat one of these little ones is the way that you treat Jesus. The values of the kingdom of God are different from religion. Romans 14, 17, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. So, in Romans, it's talking about how people would say, well, you, you, you know, today you've got people who say, well, you eat fish on Fridays, okay? Only eat fish on Fridays. Or you can only eat this or you can only eat that, and, you know. And in his time, in the time of Paul, you know, people couldn't eat pork. You know, it was a big deal, you know. Religion was about what you could and could not do. But the kingdom of God is different from the Old Testament. Christianity is not about rules, what you can and cannot do. It's about the kingdom. The kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, holiness. Holiness is a world of difference from what you can and cannot do. Legalism. Legalism leads to hypocrisy, condemning people, accusing people. Righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit brings the kingdom. He brings the kingdom. He, he gives joy. He gives peace to the tormented. He gives righteousness to the sinner. That's the kingdom of God. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things which one may edify another. Amen? In the kingdom, it's not about you. If any man would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and die. It's not about you. In the kingdom of God, the Holy Spirit comes in righteousness, in peace, in joy, to bring healing, deliverance. And in the kingdom, we're empowered by the Holy Spirit. We're given grace by God to serve one another, to use our gifts to benefit other people, to edify the body of Christ. So turn to your neighbour and say, the kingdom is not about you. It's about the king. 
we all serve one another in our service to the king. When you do it to the least of these, you do it unto him. Paul said, for what I preach is not myself, but Jesus Christ as Lord and myself as your servant for his namesake. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. What is our response to the gospel of the kingdom? To repent and believe. Repent and believe. What do we need to repent of? The Bible tells us very clearly. You look at Galatians 5. It talks about the works of the flesh are obvious, are evident. It talks about lewdness. What's lewdness? It's pornography, party spirit. Spirit of the world comes through anything that you listen to, that you watch, that's worldly. You don't get it. Many people who come who've got mental problems, who've got demonic torment, not everyone, but many of them, they get it through their device, through what they're watching, through the music they're listening to, through horror movies, all sorts of stuff. You, you're, you're into the kingdom of darkness to entertain yourself and you become demonized. You need to repent of worldliness. The spirit of this world comes through worldly things. You entertain yourself with worldly music, dance music and so on. Very easily you'll get the spirit that comes through that. For we are not of this world, but we are citizens of the kingdom of God. Amen. We've been born of heaven. Our first allegiance is to heaven. We are number one, a citizen of heaven. Our allegiance is to the King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. So we repent of everything that's ungodly in our lives. Sexual sin, the Bible is very clear that sexual sin is any sexual activity outside of a husband and wife. You need to repent. Adultery, fornication, homosexuality, all these things. And then you need to believe. Belief is a choice. I'm putting my faith in Jesus Christ. I believe in the gospel of the kingdom. I believe that Jesus saves, heals, delivers and blesses. My faith is in him. And then as we believe on him, repent of our sin, then the Holy Spirit applies the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus washes us as white as snow. We receive the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. We are made perfect and we are being perfected. We are made perfect and we're being sanctified. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's close our eyes. Those of you online, just close your eyes. I encourage you right now to repent of sin. And believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you will be saved. You will be made righteous. Right now. Put it in your own words. Tell God your sin. Gossip. Slander. Unbelief. Promiscuity. Pornography any type of witchcraft, the occult, iridology, horoscopes, palm reading, seeing a spiritual healer, yoga. Ask the Lord to forgive you, cleanse you, and put your faith in him and you shall be born again. Everyone repeat after me online in the room. I believe that I am born again, justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. I have been redeemed from darkness and transferred 
into his glorious light. I have a new man. I am a new creation. The old has passed away because I have been justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. I am a new person. I am no longer under condemnation. I am under the atoning blood. The accusations of the enemy are cancelled. The shame of my past is gone. Heaven is my home. I am a child of the kingdom of God. I am a citizen of heaven. I am a believer in Jesus Christ. My destiny is heaven. I am heaven bound. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.